Hello, and this is, I guess I'll call it part 11. So this is part 11. Um, for part of part 11, uh, we're going to finish up what we were doing in part 10. We're going to make it so the ship worker can attack. We did all the prep work last time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be constantly working in ship worker. Uh, everything we're changing. Um, so in create, we need to make sure we have life equals 10. And in step, we have to add the piece of code like we did in the enemies. If life equals 0, instance underscore destroy with parentheses, semicolon, and end bracket. So uh, that way, if it gets hit with 10 bullets, of course, we also need to have the I collision with bullet underscore enemy, life equals life minus 1, semicolon, and another piece of code, instance underscore destroy other, make sure to check other. So the bullet gets done. Um, now, uh, a lot of the code comes into play when we have global left released. Now, uh, in here, we need to add a whole new bracket. Um, if global dot cursor equals three, and then open bracket. If selected equals one, open bracket. Global dot des x equals mouse underscore x semicolon global dot des y equals mouse underscore y I don't think we need this because we have stop but I'm gonna leave it in there uh, moving equals one and attacking equals one which is very important and then we have image underscore angle equals point underscore direction then we have uh, parentheses self dot x comma self dot y comma mouse underscore x comma mouse underscore y so we face towards the mouse, we are moving, so we're going to start moving, and we're attacking. So as soon as we're done moving, we start attacking. Um, let's see. Uh, on, did I say to go to... On step event, we have not step event. Uh, on alarm one, there we go. In alarm one, we have if space instance underscore exists and then parentheses attack underscore spot. So with this function, we haven't used it yet. What this function does is it comes with a true or false statement of whether or not an object exists. So if the object exists then we're attacking. So if the object exists, we then have another block of code that says if attacking equals one. So if it exists and we're attacking, we uh, create, oh, then we have a thing, instance underscore create, and then parentheses self.x comma self.y comma bullet underscore self and parentheses and semicolon. Then we have alarm one in brackets equals 20. So what we do is, if there's an attack spot, if there's a spot we're supposed to attack, we and if we are attacking, if a command to attack was given to this particular object, then we create a bullet and uh, we reset the alarm. Now the alarm gets set in the first place by collision with stop. When we collide with stop, not only does moving equal zero, but if instance underscore exists and in parentheses attack underscore spot then we have a uh, curly bracket we have if attacking equals one instance underscore create and then in parentheses self dot x comma self dot y comma bullet underscore self and parentheses semicolon and alarm in brackets one equals one so what we end up doing is when we collide with stop um, our object goes to stop it stops moving, and if we're supposed to be attacking, it attacks, and it starts alarm one, which will go into a cycle. Now, what you may want to do is, in alarm one, here you say, if, um, write else, open bracket, and then close it, then write attacking equals zero. So if there's no if there's nothing to attack, we're no longer attacking. However, the problem with that is if the only thing you're attacking is gone, you're no longer going to be attacking. You're going to have to issue a new attack command, which is not exactly ideal. So I'm going to leave it out of my game. 
you need to mess around and see what's best for yours. Um, so uh, now we can go ahead and uh, start seeing if this works. Now for ease, I still have a couple of workers on the side of the room so that I don't have to make them, we don't have to wait for that. Uh, so let's select a couple of these, we'll do the new attack icon and we'll attack this. We'll move towards it a little bit, we're shooting at it and it's dead and uh, we're no longer shooting. We're close to this thing, now let's go ahead and attack it. We're too close to see the bullets, that was uh, my fault. but. Um, we still go, and as soon as what you're attacking dies, that's because that was the only thing with it. If there were multiple things, would then go on to the next target. Um, one of the things later will be, if you're holding, let's say, tab, and then you do this, select, then uh, you'll be able, that'll be an attack type of thing, and tab click will be target. But, uh, so that way, just like you get a box here for multiple selection, you'll be able to do area selection and whatnot. So now you could basically say all the enemies are now selected. You can go attack them now. All right, so uh, that'll be up in polishing because next time in part 12, we're going to make a fighter unit. It's going to be made by a different kind of building, and that'll all be happening in the GUI. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start polishing, and polishing is things like the GUI and uh, better graphics um, maybe not top-down graphics I'll probably do a video somewhere separate uh, not in line with the series on how to do uh, four-way isotopic graphics so that way it changes direction one of four ways kinda like if you played StarCraft it'd be like that or um, Diablo, Diablo's not RTS but that's the type of movement it would be uh, except with more units so um, that's all for now. Next time we're going to be making a fighter, and we're going to start polishing and making the game look nice, uh, act nicer, maybe fix up a couple bugs in the engine, and uh, if you guys have suggestions or things you really want to see or uh, need to see, um, just request it, and I can see what I can do. So, uh, thanks for watching. Please rate, and please comment.